Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video. I know it's been a while, so I thought I would give you a quick update on my CNC and share with you my newest upgrade. As you can see, I now got a 2.2 kilowatt water-cooled spindle installed. And in this video I'm going to talk about why it shows this one, what I prefer about this one and my old one, and I'm going to have some light machining. I'm going to machine a new Z-plate mount thingy to actually mount this one properly. It's just kind of botched on there for now. So if you're up for that, stick around. This is what I used before. It's a Crass 1050 FME1 and it's rated to 1050 watts. It's got an up to 10 millimeter chuck, I think. They use their own system. And it's pretty alright. It's, it's decent enough for wood, uh, plastics, softer metals like aluminum. But it gets to its limits pretty fast. It was too powerful or powerful enough for my old uh, CNC, the Chinese 3040C, I think, 3040T, whatever that means. But on the new CNC, on the new machine with the thicker plates and the supported linear rails, it was beginning to get uh, to become a bottleneck. Now I could still cut with it, but it was not getting productive, let's say. Whereas with this I can cut like 10 mm deep, 2 mm radially, no problem whatsoever. This was struggling very hard or even just stalling out. So I decided to get myself one of those high frequency spindles. I went for the 2.2 kilowatt uh, option just because I, th I figured if I ever need a bigger one it's, it's not that much more expensive than one of the smaller ones. And you know, once you have it, you have it. It's um, cheaper to buy the better one first and not have to upgrade. I also insisted basically on getting water cooled because this one is very noisy as I will show you later. And the water cooling just makes it so uh, if you run it for longer times, even at lower RPMs, it will still stay cool. Whereas if you run this at lower RPMs, the fan doesn't spin fast enough and it gets really toasty really fast. But before I'm going to compare the two further, I'm going to bring you in for a closer look so I can show you how my uh, spindle is set up. Now, first of all, don't judge my setup. It is obviously temporary. But here we got the spindle. It got three connectors on top. Let me focus. This is for power and the frequency control. And those two are water lines. And those two lead to a, a very professional bucket filled with high-tech water. And in there is a submerged, submergible water pump. Um, I mean, at some point I'm going to replace this with like a closed loop water cooling system, but for now, bucket is cheap. And the wire goes to, let me focus, uh, the variable frequency drive. This controls the power, the RPM, the frequency, obviously that's what it's called. I don't know how exactly how it does that. But it can tell the spindle how fast to turn, when to turn, how much torque, uh, and it can be controlled via software with a controller from the computer. Not with, I'm running Gerbil, it cannot really do that because this needs 0 to 10 volts and Gerbil runs at 5 volts. But in the future I plan to upgrade my controller and then I will, I will be able to control it from G-code. Another thing to think about is how rigid you can mount the spindle. This is a mount for my Cress. It's got a 43mm diameter ho uh, hole and it's probably 25mm high or thick. So that's all the bearing surface you get. I can't write. Okay. So since it's only mounted down here with three M6 screws, this had quite a bit of flex um, just because it can be mounted that well. Um, this leads to nasty surfaces and you can't cut, take deep cuts at once without this flexing and thus ruining the finish or the parts part at worst. This spindle got an 80mm bore, or the body is 80mm diameter. It's uniformly along the entire length so you can slide it up and down adjusting for um, material or whatever you're machining right now. And it's secured here with four screws. The surface area is 
insanely huge. I mean, not insane, but you get the point. So yeah, this won't go anywhere. And finally, I want to share with you the noise level, how those two compare. I'm going to set both to 24,000 RPM. 24,000 is the max that this will do, and somewhere below the max of this, but it's what I cut most stuff with. The small 3mm 2 flue end mills need high RPM, so that's what I'm running with. If I do engraving, it needs to be high RPMs and high feet. So um, this being quiet is actually useful because I can run it in the night and it won't bother anyone. What you're hearing now is just the driver and maybe the water pump. So that's base level noise for this spindle. So I'm turning on now. This is 8,000 RPM, 12,000, 17,000, and 24,000. This is max RPM. I can still talk comfortably over this. I can be here without theory protection, which is really nice, especially in longer runs. Let's turn it off. For the crest, I'm actually gonna put on my headphones. Okay, this is also 24,000 roughly. I can't set this one precisely, but I'm gonna try. That should be reason enough to get a good spindle. Now I was very eager to get this on here to try it out. So I drilled those holes by hand. I did not have enough Z height to machine those with a CNC. You can see those are the incorrect screw types. So that is very professional on my behalf. Lovely. And this is also not very precise. So what I'm going to do is machine a new Z plate and plain both sides, those were drilled with the drill press, so we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna be able to make those more precisely. Um, chamfer the edges, that's gonna look nice, and just kind of, you know, take it for a spin so I can show you what it's capable of.